God, gay sensitivity, and the ethics of counseling all colliding on a university campus in Georgia. A graduate student at Augusta State University says she was told to take gay sensitivity training or no diploma. While I want to stay in the school counseling program, I know that I can't honestly complete the remediation plan knowing that I would have to alter my belief. I'm not willing to, and I know I can't change my biblical views. So Jennifer Keaton is suing her school now, saying it threatened to expel her after she refused to take part in a, quote, remediation plan. Her attorney provided us with a copy of that plan, and it spells out attending diversity workshops, getting more exposure to the gay population, even suggesting that Keaton should attend a gay pride parade, and then reflecting on the experiences and write how future clients may benefit. Keaton's lawyer says... This punishes free speech, but Augusta State says it doesn't discriminate and that, quote, the professional counselor's job is to help clients clarify their current feelings and behaviors and to help them reach the goals that they have determined for themselves, not to dictate what those goals should be, what morals they should possess, or what values they should adopt. Jennifer Keaton is backed by the Alliance Defense Fund. Attorney David French is a senior counsel for the group. He's joining us live in Nashville. Aaron Mars is the manager of ethics and professional standards for the American Counseling Association, joining us live from Washington. And here in Atlanta, Greg Nevins, a supervising senior staff attorney for Lambda Legal, which advocates for LGBT equality. Greg, your concerns um, to having someone with Jennifer's views as a counselor? Well, the problem is, is that, uh, you know, many people, uh, especially young people, when they're coming, uh, when they're in the coming out process or questioning process, are looking for a, um, you know, a, a sympathetic and understanding ear. And to have somebody who is going to um, introduce their value system in a, in a negative way um, can be extremely damaging. And it doesn't really matter whether that person uh, whether that counselor is motivated by their religious beliefs or whether they're just, you know, an anti-gay bigot. I mean, if the, the, the net result on the, the, the person who's struggling with this is that they're, the, the, they're in a very, a very vulnerable position and at this most vulnerable state, they're, uh, they're being, uh, this condemnation is being visited on them and it, it, um, or they're being shunned in some way they're, and, and it's being indicated to them that there's something wrong and that I think that can be very psychologically damaging, and I think that's a, that, that's something that you know needs to be addressed. And I think it's proper for uh, you know Augusta State to make sure that that's not the situation. Um, and, and there's you know, nothing wrong with that. So David, let me ask that's you this. That, David, let me ask you this. So let's say Jennifer becomes a counselor and she wants to counsel kids, and a child comes to her and says, uh, Miss Jennifer. Um, I have these feelings. Uh, I, I'm not sure what to do about it. I think I'm gay. Uh, I, I need your help. What would she say to that child? Well, a couple of things. Every single counseling situation is different. And Jennifer has told the counseling department repeatedly that she is going to be able to uphold the valid uh, codes of ethics of the American uh, Counseling Association, those, those codes that are valid and legally applicable to her. There's no allegation here that she's done anything wrong in a counseling setting, none whatsoever. She's just articulated views in class and outside but, of class. But what if that child comes to her, what if that child comes to her as a counselor and is seeking her help? Is she going to say, sorry, I think, you know, it's really sad you're gay and I just can't help you out? You know, she will respond in an ethical and appropriate fashion to that student. And let me flip this around. You have a counseling department that is ruthlessly attempting to cleanse Christian belief from its students. Let's suppose you have a Christian student coming in for counseling. This counseling department has imposed its values, violating their own code of ethics, on these students telling them they have to change their religious beliefs, that their religious beliefs are wrong. Greg, I'm saying then, you want to yeah, weigh no, in. No, Go ahead, Greg. Greg. Yeah, that, that's ridiculous. I mean, if there's, is there any evidence that Augusta State has taken a different position towards an anti-gay person who is not uh, basing it on their religious beliefs? Because that would, be, that would be religious discrimination if she were being singled out, but someone else who said, I don't want to deal with gay people, but that's just because I, I think they're awful and it has nothing to do with my religion. That would be religious discrimination, but this isn't. What they're trying she, to do is to make sure Never that there said, is a, uh, a proper counseling environment for people in a very vulnerable situation. She and has that's never said she's 
She's well, never said and she's unwilling used, to And you've used a lot of cagey like. words like uh, the codes that are legally applicable to her and those that are valid. And you've already said that you consider a lot of those not to be valid. But the fact of the matter is, you know, it, Augusta, even though Augusta State is a public institution, they're also running a professional. They're, they're trying to train so, people for professional accreditation. They have a responsibility, and it's been upheld so, by the courts, including a case that you lost on Monday uh, in Michigan. It's been held that they have a responsibility to train people properly to be good counselors. And and so what so, you're saying is that her, just a, her expression of a religious belief is going to be enough to allow her to be singled out for extra not training at all. over the, and above She's also else, said that, you know, which is she what considers her parent of therapy is, is proper. And that's, and that, no, and that's, is, 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 uh, is no, that not she true? Is, that is, that is, that is, that is not true. That is an allegation, a hearsay allegation that the well, counseling department used to try to But the university has, a, a, university has a responsibility to make sure that as part of this, this process that, that that's not the case. And if she says, like, I the university, The university is a public institution, has no, a responsibility the, well, for upholding uh, the First uh, Amendment. No, well, the, and the First uh, Amendment uh, yes, no, They're running a degree sort of program. They're training professional counselors. Okay, so that Are would they mean, not bound by the First Amendment? That what they're bound by. I mean, by, they're no, bound by the First Amendment. Would you, they, you can't, you don't have a First Amendment right to say in response to your science exam, um, you, you know, how, how did the world come into being? You, you don't have the right to say, to, to relate your you creationism theory. You have a First theory. Amendment right to. You have, you have a right to have that have, belief, but you have to, you have to actually yes. put down the Thank answer you. to the exam. You, and, and if, she, if they say that she doesn't have the right to have her belief system, then that, that that's a different issue. But if they're saying that's that you what have they to, say. If you, uh, well, I, I don't. I, I, we're well, first we're off, in then, agreement then because they right. say that she does not have a right to this belief and she has to change her beliefs. Well, I think that's I think Aaron would back me up. Final thought, Greg. <laughs> I mean, I think Aaron would back me up that her her belief system is supposed to be put to one side. So I mean, I think that she should. You know, I, I think it should be the case. Why that, don't we Why don't we stop right there, Aaron? Is that true? Would you agree yes. with that? In the counseling profession, as in the medical profession, the needs of the client supersede the needs of the counselor. There you go. Bottom line. And so, yes. David French, Aaron Martz, the Bottom line Greg is Nivens. the First Amendment, I'm sorry to say. Well, I'll tell you what. We will definitely follow the case. That is for sure. We'll bring you three back. I appreciate you three very much for the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.